successful women's coaches are pretty darn good with people skills. I mean, I've seen some pretty good men coaches that don't have people skills. Get away with it. Okay, this gentleman here was just uh, talking about emotional intelligence. You heard about that? You heard? Okay. And, and that is exactly what I was talking about with psychologists. I mean, emotional intelligence is simply people skills. Okay. And, and, and you just wonder why did they have to change the name to emotional intelligence? Why not just call it people skills, which everybody knows what they are? Okay. And the reason is, is because it sounds smarter to call it emotional intelligence. It's more profound. That's Somebody it. There is no relabeling difference. it again. Huh? Somebody relabeling it. Exactly. That, that's what we do. It's, it's one of the big objections I have to psychology is, is having to do that. You know, it's sort of a sign of the weakness of our field. You know, I mean, they don't have to do that in engineering because it works. You know, it's real and it works, and they got it figured out pretty well. Ours is lots of matters of opinions. Okay. Uh, any any other uh, particular? I have a lot of questions actually, but I'm going to take my time. Now, but, uh, one question was, uh, and if your college coach, who was the most? Which player did you think improved the most on your team? College. I have the perfect name. I, actually, two of them, but uh, one, the, the most improved player I had was a guy named Marty Lorimer from, uh, from Canada. He was a rather low-ranked Canadian junior, and the Canadian junior weren't very good in those days. And he was a walk-up. And, and this is sort of an interesting, I don't know if it's an interesting one, but, but he came in with another player named Kelly Jones, who, who Kelly Got to, had gotten to the finals of Kalamazoo. He'd gotten to the finals of the junior indoors. He was ranked, I think, maybe two or three in the country in the juniors. And the two of them came on at the same time. Lauren Doe uh, was not good enough to even practice with the main guys on the team. You know, he had a good backhand, no forehand, no volley, fair serve, and a bad head. Okay. Kelly Jones had everything. I mean, he hit, his eye was so good. He was such a good athlete. I mean, he ended up ultimately being number one for a while in the world in doubles. You know, he could take the ball. He hit the biggest serve in the world. And this guy could take it on the rise and smack it down somebody's throat. He was a serve volleyer, and, and he played uh, number four for us. Just to start with as a freshman, he was better than that. And he, he upset the number two player in college tennis in the indoors, killed him. And so this guy was going to go somewhere. And, and poor Lauren Go was sort of a pathetic case. And, but I was desperate for players at the time. And, and, and so he was, he was a five-year project. He, he, he didn't play any matches until well into his second year. First year, couldn't practice with me. And he gradually learned the game, piece by piece. He had a head where you wouldn't think it's a good head, but it was a good head. And that is, what he, what he would do is he'd get down on himself. You know, he'd go, oh, you know, he'd choke, and he'd say, oh, it's happening again. I'm, you know, I can't. You got 5 2, and these guys always come back. And, and he learned piece by piece not to do that. He was a choker, okay? Quite a choker. And he, he learned how to win anyway. And he worked for about a year hard, just disciplined to learn to hit a forehand. And then for the next two or three years, he learned how to volley, which was really difficult for him. Not a great athlete. Okay. He learned how to volley, and by his, by his fifth year, he was playing number three for us. And he could play. He was an All-American. And he became a serve volleyer, actually, uh, because of his temperament, which was he'd get very nervous, and he was better off attacking at the net and making the guy pass him than he was hitting 10 ground strokes down the point. And he sort of figured the game out. Piece by piece, he figured it out. Whereas Kelly Jones actually went backwards. And, you know, he, he was this great talent, and, 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 and he didn't choke very much. But he, was, he, he, he had a, a poor head, ultimately. You know, he, would, he would sabotage himself in ways you know, sort of you wouldn't think that the guy would do this. Because I remember, it, it, at the end of his freshman year, I said, Kelly, you know, you'll probably be the number one player next year. You know, which all of my God, everyone wanted to play higher. They were all mad at me because I had them too low in their opinion. You know, 
and said, Kelly, you know, your game is coming along, you know. And he, he, he sort of got shaky when I said that. He didn't, he didn't like us that too, which was weird. And then the next year, he took a couple losses serving and volleying, and so then he decided he was going to stay back and beat people from the baseline, which he couldn't do because his ground strokes were great for one or two shots, but not for five or ten. He hit the ball very hard and he missed. And he'd stay back. And then he'd go to the slice back and he had a two hand. The slice was really hopeless for him. Because now he doesn't get now the other person gets control of the point on top of it. I used to watch he, he was one of my worst coaching jobs. I might have been I, I, I found it hard to believe I would say, Kelly, why don't you just serve and volley? Come in on the guy. You were so you were doing quite he'd say, You can't do that these days. You know, the guys pass you too well. You gotta work your way in. Tim Kelly, his ground strokes are, your volley's better than his, but his ground strokes are better than yours. What makes you think you're going to get control, that you're going to be able to work your way in? Maybe he's going to work his way in on you. You know, you need to go in quick, right away. Don't expose your weaknesses. You know, his weaknesses were in the consistency of the ground stroke. And, and, and he just never quite saw it. And, and, and uh, he got fair. He made it on the pro tour, but uh, you know, as a doubles player, could have been a great singles player. This guy Lorendo gradually worked his way until he ended up reaching the 16s at the, at the U.S. Open. Uh, he became a world-class singles player. He's now the coach of the Canadian Davis Cup team. All right, he runs basically the top players in Canada.